All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, properties of the elements. Uh, in class today, you guys saw that the uh, elements are organized according to the properties and by the atomic mass from Dmitry Mendeleev's original periodic table. Uh, we know the organization of periodic tables based on reactivity and atomic mass, and characteristics of a missing element uh, can be predicted based on the patterns and trends in the table. Atomic mass is defined as the mass of a single atom or isotope of an element. Each ma element has an average atomic mass that is expressed as a decimal number. These are numbers that are appear in atomic catalysts and also in the periodic table of cards. Uh, later today, we're going to look at how you determine those atomic average atomic masses. Uh, reactivity, as we saw with the sodium and lithium, is a property that describes uh, whether an element or compound will combine with others. Uh, reactivity information is on the periodic table cards. Also describes the speed of a reaction, whether it's vigorous or uh, violently occurring. Uh, we know Mendeleev organized his table based on reactivity and atomic mass, and uh, it helped us predict undiscovered elements, uh, such as germanium, which was discovered um, in Germany two years after the publication of Dmitry Mendeleev's uh, periodic table. Uh, Mendeleev as idea again uh, originated in the, in the dream and uh, that uh, the elements in the columns have similar properties these are sometimes called families columns or groups uh, reactivity depends whether an element will combine with others and uh, Mendeleev's arrangement of the elements help predict the existence of undiscovered elements so to check in which of these elements would be grouped together on the periodic table Please write down and explain your thinking for this question. In looking at the periodic table, we should be able to see that something like silver can be placed in the periodic table. But as you see here, it seems to fit in between uh, the previously established table that we created in lesson number nine. The periodic table gives us a lot of information about the elements, and we're going to look at those things now. We can identify metals, nonmetals, metalloids, alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition elements, halogens, noble gases, lanthanides, and actinides. We'll be able to describe properties of elements and describe the general properties of an element based on its location in the periodic table and identify elements that will exhibit similar behavior uh, based on their, their position in the table. We take the card sort, as we did in class, and we opened it up, spread it apart. We can accommodate more elements in between these two groups. The periodic table developed over time based on this information, and this is where Mendeleev started and then expanded the periodic table. As elements were either found, discovered, or they had information about them, they were placed into the table according to chemical properties and average atomic mass. Atomic number is a consecutive whole number associated with the elements on the periodic table. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons in the atomic nucleus of an element. So if we had an element uh, such as carbon, for example, carbon's atomic number on the periodic table, carbon is number six. So that means carbon has an atomic number of six. That means it has six protons. And if it's a neutral element, it also has six electrons. So the number of protons is what determines the identity of the atom. If we somehow were able to add a proton, which may not be possible, we get an element with seven protons. If we had an element with seven protons, that would no longer be carbon, it would now be nitrogen. The patterns on the periodic table from left to right and top to bottom, there are multiple patterns. Uh, there was the indication of nonmetals and metalloids on reactivity based on shading and darker hues means more reactivity. A black outline indicates solids, a red outline indicates gases, and a green outline indicates liquids. On the periodic table, this is the vocabulary that we use to describe the table. The first is a group. A group is a vertical column in the periodic table. Elements in a group, as we know, have similar chemical properties. Periods are horizontal rows. Alkali metals, these are the ones that are in the first group, group 1A. 
Uh, the alkyl anathenols are the ones next to that in group 2A. The halogens are in group 7A, which is almost all the way to the right. And the noble gases are on the very far right of the periodic table. Uh, they're called noble because they are not reactive. And the group numbers here for 1A, this is used in the United States specifically. In Europe, they usually call that group 1, and then this one group 2. Um, 7 is actually 17 in Europe, and 8A is 18 in Europe again. We're going to be using the 1A, or like this, and then the uh, 5A, for example, like that. Either of those are acceptable to be used um, in, the, uh, in the relationship here for the United States. Uh, the main group elements are the elements in groups 1a to 8a, and then the ones that are stuck in the middle where we expanded the table are called the transition elements. These are often uh, abbreviated 1b to 8b, and in Europe these are groups uh, 3 through 12. The lanthanide and actinides, these are the two rows that are placed separately at the bottom of the periodic table. The reason they're placed separately at the bottom of the periodic table is just like the Act the uh, I'm sorry. The uh, transition elements were stuck inside transition elements. The same thing is true about the lanthanides and actinides. The only reason they're put at the bottom is because if you stick them in the periodic table where they're supposed to go, they would extend out the periodic table much, much larger than it needed to be. These are the uh, lanthanides and actinides down here. This is the group 1 and group 2. Uh, these here are group 3 through, oh, sorry, the, uh, um, are the uh, transition elements. And then these are the groups uh, 3 through 7, and then the noble gases here. So the periodic table would just be a bit longer, and that's the reason why it's put on the bottom of the paper for the lanthanides and actinides. Metals are elements that are excellent conductors of heat um, and electricity. Uh, they are flexible, malleable, and they are also uh, able to be s uh, uh, stretched into wires. They're found on the left of the stair step line in the periodic table. The stair step line goes between boron and aluminum, so if we take out the periodic table, it goes down like this. The ones to the left side are the metals, the ones to the right side are called the non metals. Uh, non metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity, they are dull and brittle, and they're found on the right of the stair step line. The ones that are right on the stair step line, like uh, silicon and germanium, for example, uh, these two here, um, as well as everything else on the stair step line, on the edge of it, are called metalloids. Uh, they have properties that are between metals and nonmetals, and sometimes they act like a metal, other times they act like a nonmetal. Silicon, for example, used in computer chips. Uh, has the ability at times to conduct electricity like a metal, and other times not to conduct electricity, depending on the chemical bonding and how it's connected together and what it's connected to. Um, so that's one reason why it's used in computer chips. Now the periodic table reveals a lot of patterns and similarities of the groups on the periodic table. Uh, names, symbols, average atomic mass are all provided. Uh, Many of the uh, groups of elements in some periods have specific names, such as halogens and noble gases, um, alkali metals, alkali anth metals, and so forth. Metals are at the center on the left, and nonmetals are at the top right. Elements near the dividing line, as we know, are considered metalloids. Now, in each individual um, atom of an element, um, as we'll learn about, there is a nucleus, protons, electrons, and neutrons. The nucleus is the dense positively charged structure found in the center of the atom. It is composed of protons and neutrons. A proton is a particle with a positive charge found in the nucleus of atoms. An electron is a particle with a negative charge. So electrons move very fast around the outside of the nucleus of atoms. A neutron is a particle that does not have a charge found in the nucleus of the atom. Protons and electrons have almost the same mass, almost the same mass. Um, however, neutrons have no charge, and then the protons have a positive charge. Electrons, a symbol for that, is E with a negative charge. Scientists have created models to describe these atoms, and there's evidence um, that is based on collections of observations that everyone agrees on. 
when we talk about the smallest bits of matter, all matter is made up of extremely small particles called atoms. They're too small to be seen directly, even with a microscope. Uh, the, the atom is composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are in the densest nucleus of the atom, and then the electrons are outside of that dense nucleus called the electron cloud. Protons are positively charged, and neutrons no charge. Electrons are negatively charged. One thing to know about science is it's theoretical and it's dynamic. Dynamic means it changes, okay, it changes. So we have a model based on data. We get more data, changes the model, collect more data, the model gets altered constantly in this process. Our models and theories are continually being revised and replaced with new models and theories with new evidence. Here are two models of helium and beryllium atoms. The number of each contain, the nucleus of each contains protons and neutrons. The electrons orbit the nucleus. So look at these two models and answer the following two questions. This should take about one minute. Now that you're done with that, let's look and see. Similarities and differences. Well, the helium here, as you can see, it's got two things on the outside. Beryllium's got four things. One, two, three, four. Okay. They both have two on the inner circle. And here you can see that this one has neutrons and protons. This has neutrons and protons. This has two of each, two neutrons and two protons. This one, and one, two, three, four, five of the dark ones, and one, two, three, four of the light ones. Okay. Why is beryllium number four? Well, it's got four of the light ones, so those must be the protons, and it's got five of the neutrons in the nucleus. So this is one reason why beryllium would be number four. The other reason is helium's got two electrons, beryllium's got four electrons. In a neutral atom, these will correspond to the protons. In a neutral atom, and again, it has to be neutral for this to be true.